Welcome to this special Valentine's message. Adamus is here for us. So with that, let's take the good deep breath. Breathe the I am here. I am present. Let the energies flow with each breath. Breathing in with all that you are and breathing out. Breathing from the heart of you with all that we are. Breathing body, mind, and soul. Take the good deep breath. Allow yourself to feel into these energies, into this special message for each of us. Be with a good deep breath as we begin. I am that I am. Adamus of St. Germain. Welcome to this special Valentine's message. I like to use this time of the year to give a special message to those who call themselves Shambra, and in this message in particular, to really address it to the new ones who are finding their way to the Crimson Circle. I'd like to explain to the new ones a little bit about who we are, and about what we've been doing, and about where we're going. I know so many of you have found this group lately, this Crimson Circle, and uh, may have even visited the website and have many, many questions about uh, what does this group do and uh, why was I attracted to them or why do I even feel a little bit strange about them. But uh, let me start out by welcoming you and uh, telling you who I am. I am the beloved Saint Germain. I've walked many, many lifetimes on this planet in human form. I had my last lifetime in the 18th century, leaving this planet at the end of that century, and since then working with humans all across the world who are seeking their freedom, for indeed that is one of my main themes, freedom. Freedom from limitation, freedom to the cycle of what seems to almost be endless lifetimes on this planet, freedom now to emerge from the cocoon of life and emerge now into that butterfly, into that free being, into that spirit being that you truly are, but now with all the beautiful experiences of your many, many lifetimes on this planet and with the experiences, all of the wisdom, for indeed everything that you have done in all of your lifetimes will be brought to wisdom by this facet of yourself we call the Master. Everything, everything that you've done, and you'll come to realize, in spite of perhaps your current human judgment, that there never was wrong, there never was bad. I know sometimes the mind argues and wants you to believe that there was something that was done wrong or even done wrong to you, but you come to realize it was all just experience. And it's all brought to wisdom as you come to your realization. I've taken the name of Adamus Saint-Germain in the work that I do with this group called the Crimson Circle to differentiate what I do with them versus what I've done in the past with other channelers, in particular that with Guy Ballard, or uh, as you went by the name of Godfrey King. So I've taken this name, Adamus, to differentiate myself, but at the core it is still all Saint Germain. Saint Germain, of course, meaning Holy Brother, the name that I used in my last lifetime on the planet. So I'd like to welcome the new ones you come after, some who have been here with the Crimson Circle for 20 years now, for it had its origins in August 1999 with my fellow Ascended Master called Tobias. Tobias left 10 years ago so that he could come back to Earth incarnate, so that he could actually enjoy life 
and also be here to be a part of this amazing time that the planet is going through right now. I came to the Crimson Circle in September of 2009 on an official basis. I had been a guest for Tobias on several occasions before then, but I came officially in September 2009 to be with this group. They call themselves Chambra. Chambra is an ancient term. It goes all the way back to the time of Yeshua, or what many of you would know as Jesus. Chambra, at the time, the translation basically means of a family of the rock, a family that is sa- stable and solid. And they would meet back then even to discuss the mysteries and the mystics. They would meet back then to talk about a time that would come on the planet when there would be realization for many, many humans, when the planet would undergo the greatest transformation of all time in the history of the planet. They called themselves Shambra, and many of them had origins with the Essenes, and many of them continued in the Essenes after, but this was a group within the group of Essenes called Shambra, going all the way back to the time of Yeshua. Many of them had known each other back in the end days of Atlantis, when there was something called the Temples of Tien in what is now generally the area northeast of Cuba. The Temples of Tien were a place where there was great magic, there was great mystery, there was great reverence for the human journey. The Temples of Tien sat, what I would say, just a half a dimension or half a breath off of the reality of the planet, so generally they couldn't be found by others. And here in these temples of Tien, they allowed themselves things like self-love, things like independence and freedom and sovereignty. They came back in the times of Yeshua to seed the planet with the Christ consciousness, the holy, pure consciousness. And then they showed up again at the calling shortly after World War II, to come back to the planet now for the greatest time of all. It is a global affiliation that stretches from one country to another across the oceans. It is a global affiliation of human beings who are allowing their realization. As I've said in some of our other gatherings, the numbers uh, who occasionally uh, connect with the Crimson Circle up to 130,000 is a core group, um, a group that regularly reads the materials and connects into the energies of Crimson Circle of about 30,000. And then a core, core group who will be the first into their realization a realization that has been incubating for a long time now. And now, in this year of 2020, it starts happening. The realization of these beings is something that is already uh, for, uh, for already a foregone conclusion. They're already there. They're just experiencing what it was like to come to their realization. And... I use the word realization instead of the word enlightenment, but I suppose you could interchange the two. I I prefer realization because you come to realization, you come to realize and remember who you really are and what you're really doing on this planet. Many, many will be coming into their realization this year and in the few years that follow. And I'll explain in a moment what they're doing. But now, once again, I'd like to welcome those of you who are new to this. In the Crimson Circle, there are no rules. No rules whatsoever. I talk on occasion about my dislike for the mind and mood medication drugs that you have, some of them known as SSRIs, some of them antidepressants, but... Anytime there is an interference, a chemical interference with the brain, it literally suppresses and can sometimes also uh, cause a lot of struggle and challenges 
with the natural process of coming to realization. So other than that, there's no rules, there's no clothes that have to be worn, there's no secret uh, uh, oaths or anything else like that. There's no dues in the crimson circle. There's nothing you have to pay, nothing you have to do. There are those who freely give of their energy and their money to sustain the crimson circle, but it's never pushed, it's never begged, it's never, never even really requested. There's nothing you need to buy because eventually everything that's discussed, even in some of our groups that we call Kihak or some of the uh, live workshops, that information eventually comes out in what we call the shouds. The shouds are generally the monthly webcasts. And sooner or later, everything comes out and it's all free. It was set up this way by Tobias in the very beginning. And it was supported by me when I came in because... There are many around the world who right now who simply can't afford it or don't think they can afford it. And we want that access to all of this to be free. There's no membership. There's nothing you have to sign, no oath you have to take, no membership uh, to either get, to renew, or to ever cancel. You're here by your free will, by your total free will. So it is the most interesting time on the planet right now. I've covered it in many of our gatherings and our workshops and our shouts, which is the monthly webcast, saying that right now is an amazing time. It is what we call the time of machines. The time of machines is the title of a book that I wrote shortly before my death in my last lifetime on this planet where I literally time traveled and I came to the year 2020 and years later on and, and some years even before, but I landed in and around the year 2020 and I saw what was happening on the planet. It was difficult to put it into perspective at the time because here this was in the late 1700s. And I really couldn't fathom uh, this thing that I called the looking glasses. Everybody was looking into this piece of glass and I now realize it is your mobile or your handy devices that you carry with you. Everybody was looking into computer screens, everybody staring into these things and interconnected on what I've come to learn is called your internet. It was a time of machines when robots were just first starting to come to life coming off the workbenches of the engineers, the technicians, the software people, and starting to come to life in a wide variety of applications. Everything from taking your orders at restaurants, to building your cars and machines, to building houses, to uh, serving as, as uh, traffic policemen, and just about everything else you can imagine. And it was all starting right here and right now. And the time of machines was also a really a turning point for what you call your computers. Back 40, 50 years ago, computers were just starting to come into being. They were, by comparison, very slow, very cumbersome, very large. What you have now, so tiny, so small, but yet can do so much and the changes in computing power are going to continue to increase exponentially in these next few years, in these next few decades. The computer ability and what will ultimately become artificial intelligence, artificial general intelligence, artificial super intelligence, are transforming the planet so much to the point that a new species of humans is going to evolve over these next few decades. At first, the current human species will simply have augmentations, devices put into their body, uh, replacement hearts, you already, that's already quite common, but pretty soon it's going to be replacement devices, pretty soon a type of nanotechnology and stem cells that literally will regrow body parts and ultimately where the birthing, the way you've known it in the past, is no longer going to be the most widely accepted way of birthing. It'll be done 
uh, totally in the incubators, in the laboratory, and it will be genetically modified. And it shouldn't be frightening. It's simply an evolution of the human species. This is all taking place right now in an amazingly short period of time with an accelerated level of computer intelligence. And it's all right here in your lifetime at this time of machines. For this group called Chambre, and for you if you should ever use that name to define yourself, there's just a few essentials. First of all, this group that's been around it many as long as 20 years now, it's about allowing their realization. And again, I use the word realization interchangeably with enlightenment, but you notice I said allowing realization. It's not studying it, for there's really nothing that you can study. It's allowing it. It's realizing that realization is a natural process. Well, even the human could not do it, even if they wanted to. The human can allow it, but the human cannot fashion it or control it. The human can simply allow what is a very natural process to take place. Allowing means just letting this divine part of you do its thing. It's the caterpillar going into the cocoon and emerging as the butterfly all quite naturally. So I say allowing the realization. This group has spent lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes studying uh, spirituality, studying the, the mysteries and being the mystics. And they come into this lifetime now, oh, so many of them, they, they have delayed their realization. They could have had it a lifetime or two or, or some even three lifetimes ago, but they waited until now. They waited to be here on the planet at this time of machines. They waited. They held back their realization so they could be here right now. And now we're starting to see it. More and more are simply allowing. They're not fighting it. They're not trying to structure it. The human mind simply could not, could not design and, and carry out realization or enlightenment. It could not. Oh, once in a while it deceives itself and it, it has uh, what I would call a, a mini or a limited realization, but not a full realization. But ultimately it's not up to the mind or even to the human. It's the, the divine that does this. So these humans are allowing their realization. You probably won't read about it in the newspapers, if there are newspapers anymore. You probably won't hear about it or read about it on your social media because when one reaches their realization, it is such a per deeply personal and private thing. It is so intimate and in a way so fragile, just like when the butterfly first emerges from the cocoon and begins to spread its wings and it feels so fragile and vulnerable at the time, even though it actually really isn't, but it just feels that way. That you won't find uh, the Chambre proclaiming their realization. They'll just know it. And others will know it simply by the look in their eyes and simply by the feel of their energy. They won't have to wear a, a t-shirt that proclaims their realization. They won't have to write about it. Oh, many of them later on may write some books about uh, really the, the, the hazards and the pitfalls of coming to realization, how humans make it so much more difficult than it has to be, and uh, with the suggestions that it can be so much easier. But for now, these would be quiet realizations with profound effect on the human, on the person, and ultimately on the planet. This group has also made a commitment to stay embodied after their realization. 
Well, that's an important point because so often after uh, one would come to their enlightenment, after uh, many of the ascended, almost all of the ascended masters came to their enlightenment or realization, they left the planet shortly after, um, moments after, days, weeks, uh, sometimes months. But you realize that you've come to the end of the line on your whole journey on this planet. Why stay? There's nothing more that you can learn. And really nothing more to experience other than just staying on the planet while you're realized. But they come to realize the planet is what it is. Humans are going through their experiences. The planet's not a bad place. It doesn't need salvation or anything like that. So they just leave. Time's up. It's, it's like graduating from the university. Why, why linger around? They come to the other side without fear of death. I really want to emphasize that in realization, when a person has realized there is absolutely no fear of death, <laughs> there might be fear of staying on the planet in human form, but absolutely no fear of death. So many, many leave upon their realization, but this group called Chambra has decided to stay on the planet, embodied in human form for a few decades, maybe more, but to stay to be here on the planet, to do a number of things. First of all, to enjoy life. And many of them really hadn't done that until recently, if ever. To just enjoy life, no longer struggling, where the whole concept of suffering doesn't even exist anymore in their lives, even though it might exist in the world around them. They've decided to stay, to enjoy the beauty of life. Many of them have been here on the planet over a thousand lifetimes. And many will decide to stay for a while, to travel, to take long walks in nature, to enjoy the natural beauty of this planet. Because they realize this is the last lifetime on Earth. The question comes up from time to time, but could they come back for another lifetime if they wanted? Well, of course, but generally it doesn't happen, and even if it does, they generally don't do it in what you would call a regular birth and death process type of uh, incarnation. They, they've brought with them the essence of their human body and all their human experiences they can reappear on the planet just about any time they want for short periods of time. They don't need to go through birthing. They can manifest uh, what you call the illusion of their physicality that they used to have and still enjoy things about Earth. But many, many of them would almost prefer to spend their time on New Earth or Theos. Theo, which is, which is a place like New Earth, where it has all the attributes of this planet, but without the density, without the difficult gravity, without getting stuck in incarnation after incarnation, without having to have uh, your ancestry, you know, your, your family from the past. So it is like Earth, but totally free. Free to be who you are. The other important thing about this group, who call themselves Chambra, is they're learning now that they're learning what energy is. We discuss it at length. There's many materials available to you if you'd like to look into it more, but the relationship between consciousness and energy. And for so long it was thought that energy was something on the outside that you had to attain, but this group of Shambra are learning now that really all of the energy is within them. It's all theirs. They don't have to work for it or fight for it. Nobody can steal their energy and there would be no need for them to steal it from anyone else. They're learning that the energy is theirs and it's there to serve them. Imagine how life would change for you knowing that all energy is here to serve you. Never to make life difficult. 
never to make you suffer, but just here to serve you. This is a huge, huge change in dynamics for those who call themselves Shambra. Finally, a letting energy serve them and realizing it is all their energy in the first place. It allows them then to stay on the planet without suffering, without need, without having to work jobs that they don't enjoy. It allows them to stay here, letting their energy serve them, letting themselves enjoy the rest of their time here on the planet. And then one final thing, one reason, they're choosing to stay. They're going to radiate their consciousness. They're going to open up and allow that light of their consciousness to be on this planet at this time of machines. For with all the changes being brought about with new technology on the planet, all the changes coming about in terms of artificial intelligence and robotics and nanotechnology and everything else that is right here, right now. It's not off in the future. It's right here, right now. There's a great need for consciousness on the planet, and it can only be brought by those who are in human form and who are embodied. It cannot be brought by the Ascended Masters or those in the angelic realms. It can only be brought or planted or grounded here on the planet by those who are embodied. And that's why they've chosen to stay, above and beyond anything. As they radiate their consciousness, they do it quietly. They do it sitting on a park bench or sitting in a cafe. They don't have to, they don't have to uh, try to project it out on, or inflict it on anything. It just is. It just is. Just their presence changes everything. They're not trying to save the world, not at all. They're not trying to change humans one by one or group by group or nation by nation, not at all. But what happens is when they allow their consciousness to radiate, their light to shine, it illuminates potentials for individuals and ultimately for the whole planet that could never otherwise be seen. There are many, many potentials, even for you in your life, but many of them right now are simply out of consciousness, out of awareness. It would be like putting a light in a, in a dark, dark room, and just one candle will change the room because suddenly you see not just the darkness, but you see what's all around. You see the walls, you see the doors, you see the pictures and the artwork. You see the ceiling and the floor. You see the furniture and everything around you. So these beings called Chambra would never go to another and tell them which way to turn, left or right, high or low. They simply shine their light so the humans who are ready can see it for themselves. They can see that they have many, many more choices and potentials in their life and eventually for humanity. And this is so important now at the time of machines. So important for humans to see the other potentials that come for this new species of humans on the planet. The new potentials for artificial intelligence, for biotechnologies, to do things like solve disease problems, solve hunger and distribution problems on the planet, to collapse old power systems on the planet, to bring a new democracy to this world. You see, because technology, the way it is structured right now, where its capabilities are increasing so quickly and the costs are coming down just as fast, this has a way of democratizing the world to bringing to the needy the things that they never had before because with a simple mobile device, and access to the internet, they have the same potentials nearly as somebody very, very wealthy, comes from a wealthy family, living in a wealthy country, and has a whole different perspective of life. Technology has the tendency to democratize, to bring even potentials to everyone. 
And that's why this group called Chambra has chosen to stay here and shine their light. There are humans on the planet right now who have been carrying old, old karmic issues. Many of the issues related to their ancestral families have been carrying these issues for lifetime and lifetime and simply don't know how to get out of these issues. But the light of the Masters who stay on this planet will illuminate the potentials for them to show them if they choose they can break free of these old karmic connections and these old issues of their lack of self-worth. It can help them break through medical issues, but more than anything else, help them break through one of the greatest issues on the planet right now, which is mental imbalance. Mental imbalance, not talked about nearly as much as the medical issues that humans face, the diseases and things like cancer and diabetes and many other things, but there is a lot more mental imbalance on the planet right now than there even is physical, and of course, as many of you know, the mental imbalances ultimately cause the physical diseases. The mental imbalances cause things like suffering in humanity. They cause people a lack of joy. They cause people to hide within the darkest recesses of their own being, afraid of themselves and afraid of, afraid of the demons, many times that are placed outside of themselves but actually really emanate from within. Having masters on this planet who are simply shining their light, bringing in consciousness, will help those who are experiencing depression, psychosis, loss of self-esteem, and help bring new potential into their lives. But more than anything, at this time of machines, Consciousness is needed on the planet to balance, for you can imagine what the planet would be like with very, very powerful and efficient technology, but without consciousness. Let's take a good deep breath with that. What we'll take a good deep breath. This group that calls themselves Shambra, has gone beyond what I would consider or call spiritual. It's no longer, or it certainly never was, a New Age group, and it's really not even a spiritual group at this point. There are many paths to realization, not just one, and it's not just spiritual. This group has had their origins in the spiritual path particularly coming from the times of Yeshua, many of them being instrumental in starting the churches and the religions of this world, taking a spiritual and oftentimes mystical path into their realization. But now they've come to realize that spirituality isn't the only path to realization. It is one. It is one that nearly all Shambra have followed in the past, but they come to realize there are many different pathways to realization. That realization itself has changed the very nature of Crimson Circle. It is no longer a spiritual group. It is simply a group allowing their realization without doctrines, without rules, without membership. Allowing their sovereignty one by one, but yet having that affiliation with each other, knowing that they're not alone in what they're doing. So what comes next in your life if you're new to Crimson Circle? What comes next? You've gone through awakening, and now you're in that post-awakening phase, post-spiritual phase even, if you would call it that. You're going to be going through so many changes in your life, changes in your body, everything from the DNA, the chromosomes, and certainly all the neurons right now. The neurons are the things that ultimately connect to the energy 
that sustains life, your life. The neurons are changing. You have approximately 100 billion neurons in your brain. They're changing to accommodate the other things that are going on in your mind and in your body. There's going to be times of body aches and pains, times of great discomfort in the body, because once again, you're going through a, a very huge change in your physical nature, where you still, yes, have a biological body, but you're now integrating back into what they call the light body, what I prefer to call the free energy body. So, yes, many changes in the body, aches and pains at times, because there is a tremendous changeover in your biological network. At times, your mind is going to seem fuzzy. You won't be able to remember things. You're going to be thinking different. And it's frightening at first, because after all these lifetimes on the planet, you're used to thinking and being rational in a certain way. As a matter of fact, you have tried to perfect that, to hone it, even to narrow it down, to control it. But that's changing. And no matter what you do to try to control it, it is going to change. You're going beyond the limitations of the human mind, and it limits the senses. Not just your human senses, but you have over 200,000 angelic senses, and you're going beyond those limitations. And it's going to feel awkward at times. You're going to feel like you're going out of your mind, because in a way you are. But you're also going along the pathway that the ones who call themselves Chambra help to pave, making the way easier. You have access to 20 years' worth of materials and information about coming to realization. You have the light of those who have come before you to shine for you to see potentials you might not have ever seen before. They're not going to do it for you, but they'll shine the light to help you see and then to help you choose. You'll have it easier than most of them had it, because their journey helped to helped to break the way, helped to create new portals beyond just the human limitations. You'll have less suffering than what they had. And you'll soon come to realize that suffering isn't even in your vocabulary anymore. It, it just goes out. Yeah, there might be suffering in others around you, but in your world, there's no need for suffering. It's not supposed to be uh, the way of humans on the planet. And you'll hear from Shambro and from me on a regular basis. It's all right now about allowing. Once again, realization is a natural process. There's no crystals that will do it for you. You can meditate every day, and it's not necessarily going to do it for you. You can practice breathing. You can practice you know, all sorts of sacred ceremonies and tantra and everything else. Those are, to a large degree, spiritual distractions, what I call makyo. True realization is a natural process, and it doesn't even have to be spiritual. So you'll be hearing from me and from other Shambra along the way about allowing. Just allow. Just allow. Oh, there'll probably come a point where you get sick of even hearing the words, because I know the Shambra who've been with me and with Tobias for a while, uh, they just got tired of hearing it. But they finally realized one day, it's as simple as that, allowing. No matter what background you come from, no matter what school you attended, if you even attended a university, no matter if you came from a rich background or a poor background, no matter if you were a thief and a liar or even a politician, <laughs> no matter what, it doesn't matter in realization. Because everything, everything, everything that you've ever done is brought to wisdom by a facet within you, a facet we call the Master. You, the human, don't have to do anything other than allow and ultimately enjoy life on this planet. 
You're amongst the first wave of the new ones coming into Crimson Circle. You'll hear a lot of stories from Chambra who have been around for a while. And I chuckle sometimes because they're brilliant and wonderful stories and sometimes greatly exaggerated stories. But that's the beauty of Chambra. You're the first new real wave coming into Crimson Circle and there will be other waves of new ones behind you. It doesn't matter that whether or not you, you were here with this group since the times of Atlantis or Yeshua, some of you were, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. What matters more than anything else is you've come through your awakening and now you're ready for realization. It can be a long and difficult process if you're doing it alone, if you have no idea what's going on within you. But you have the benefit of all these years of the experiences and the journey and the coming of realization from the ones who currently call themselves Chambra. It's been a delight for I, Adamus, to have worked with this group for the past 10 years and I anticipate a, at least a few more years working with them. Then there'll be enough true realized masters on the planet that I might just be able to step back and enjoy a little bit more of my time at the Ascended Masters Club. It's an honor to have you with this group, an honor for you to be here for this special message, what I call the Valentine's message. I like Valentine's for a variety of reasons, but one is that the symbol for Valentine's, of course, is the heart. The heart. But it's also a symbol for coming to Earth. It points downwards, coming to Earth as you have done. You came from your angelic families. You came to this planet to take on the human form, and now you turn that heart the other way. What I call the spade. It's a symbol of ascension, going back out, going back through, going up. I don't often use the word ascension because there are so many misconceptions about it, but it's really coming to realization. So you put that heart and the spade together. The passion and the compassion of the human, and then the mastery as you come into your realization, and now you have that perfect set of, of symbols coming to Earth and now going by way of realization. It's a delight to have you here in the Crimson Circle, joining this group called Chambra. You'll be hearing more and more from me. I come from the origins. I am Saint Germain, and I use the name Adamus or Adamus Saint Germain for our work with Crimson Circle. I look forward to being with you every step of the way into your realization. I am Adamus. And so it is. Truly take the good deep breath and feel the energies and the words of Adamus. Really feel into what all this means to each of us. A really bold and rich message. Take that good deep breath and be with it. Allow it. Breathe and feel. Breathe. It's no coincidence that you're here, no coincidence that you're listening to this. So stay with the good deep breath of that. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.